Hello, 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 hello. How you going, everybody? It's, I'm back again for my last live Facebook of the weekend. So for all of you who are just sick of seeing me, sorry about that. Um, feel free to hit the unfollow button. <laughs> um, but I'm just gonna just trying to bring it up on my iPad here and get myself all ready. Turn my comments on. So I know who is watching me. Oh, hang on a minute. Hey, Tina. Hi, Alison Bevis. Alison! God, I miss your face. Okay, Jessica, yeah. you cannot bump that table or I'm going to throw you into next week. Thank you. Um, sorry, parenting. Okay, so I'm going to do a painty art journal page this afternoon. This is a page that, uh, a project that has, I was, hey Bev, um, I was originally inspired by something I saw on Pinterest. So this is not... <laughs> not my idea this um Jess can you shut that sliding door please um this is not my idea this is something that I have seen and I have turned into my own like a lot of crafting um there's nothing new in scrapbooking and art journaling card making anymore paper crafting is like a a continually turning around industry so this is a project that I created at a retreat last year and then turned it into my own. So I originally, this is the page that I did at retreat and it is just using acrylic paint and it is a, a two page. So um, I can't recall who the original author was, uh, so full credit to them and I'm making a very big point of saying this is not my original design. But it's something that has been so much fun and I have absolutely loved. So this is a this is my little art journal uh, and it's just about working with colour. I have also created uh, another page in my big 12 by 12, sorry, 12 by, um, what size is that? Nine and a half by 11 journal, my big dilutions journal using a range of stamps. There's some journaling on here. I've used some stamps here, which are a um, paper artsy stamp. And there's that one. Uh, I've also done an art journal cover. So this is my art journal cover for one of my big journals. And this is using the pinks and reds, which is the color combination I'm going to use today. Um, now you'll also notice that my art journal has got a clear cover on it. This is something that I sell in my shop and it just protects the front of my art journal a little. So these are available online as well. Jessica will put the link in the comments for those. I think they're about $14 and they fit a 12, oh sorry, a, a large Dilutions journal beautifully. Um, what else have I done with it? Oh, it's such an addictive technique. Here is one that I've done on my little art journal. So I did it in the teals and greens and blues. So, um, and then just a stamp, uh, a, a paper artsy stamp from my personal collection on the top here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using the Dina Wakeley acrylic paints. I have got my... Dina Wakeley journal here and I've got one of the craft pages open. I'm going to use the craft pages to show you that acrylic paint can go over everything. As you can see, I've given it a light white wash with um, gesso and what I'm going to do is start building my colours. So I've got a range of colours here next to me and I've actually got them all in a similar sort of colour order that 
that I want to use them. So they're just sitting off camera. So what I like about the Dina Wakely heavy bodied acrylics is that they are paints that you can build up. They're lovely and thick and juicy. And I, I just, I love them. They're really, really easy to use. Uh, the next color I'm gonna put down is Tangerine. And sorry guys, I'm just, there you go. Um, and while the colors are wet, and this is the important bit with doing this technique, you have to move the colors around. So I've got quite a bit of paint here. I've got some paper towel next to me off camera. And what I'm gonna do is just take some of the paint off my brush and then run my brush over that line to blend them, to blend that line, to blur that orange and yellow line. So I'm quite generous with my paint while I'm doing this technique. It's got to be nice and juicy. So the heavy bodied acrylic paints just blend absolutely gorgeous. I think currently I have the full color range of the Dina Wakely paints in stock. And I also have the full color range of the Dilutions flip tops in stock as well. I uh, had a big shipment in last week. And uh, like I mentioned, the yellow is currently on special <laughs> because I over ordered. So I'm working in the colors that they would be alongside each other on the color wheel. So starting with yellow in the middle, yellow is like your great equalizer, uh, and then working around from there. And I'm just following the flow and letting those colors overlap. I will do two coats because I want to make sure that I've got something nice and rich. And I'm just gonna keep making my circle bigger and bigger and bigger. As you can see, I love this ruby red. It is gorgeous and it's super powerful. So in saying that, I have to be aware of the blending of this color. So off on the side here, I'm taking off some extra paint. I probably could do it in another journal, um, take the extra paint off. And you can see that I'm just softening that, that line, that blurred line. When I go back and blend my colors in a moment, a bit better and add a second coat, I'm gonna make this line from here to here disappear a bit more. So after red, we will put fuchsia. And this is where I'm going to have to slide this way a little bit. So this makes a awesome cover for your art journals. Uh, this makes an amazing page in your journals. You could do this as a canvas on your wall. It is not brain surgery. <laughs> but what makes it work is the order that you put your colors in. So I have done, having done this before, I know the order that I need to put my, my paints in. And it's just a little bit of common sense, doing some test colors first to make sure that the colors will blend and overlap nicely. Um, I've got eggplant next, so I've gone ruby, fuchsia, now eggplant. Next, and just squirting it on. So this is a quick and easy technique. So how's everybody's Sunday going here? Everybody having a lovely Sunday? Good, good, good. I'm gonna pop a little blackberry on next. Now everyone knows this is not my favorite color. Purple is not my jam, but I'm gonna pop it on. But what I am going to do, the next color that I'm gonna put on, on this edge here is going to be night, and that is um, the, the navy, navy blue.
So just blending that in. And that was perhaps a little bit too much paint, but long strokes. So the type of brush works really well. I have a wide brush, so one that's about 1.5 centimetres, and that is super important to do something in with, with a wide brush. So um, you'll notice I didn't wash my brush at all during that process because the colours just got darker and darker. So just off screen here, I'm using my, my little water well just to clean my brush to make sure that when I start again with the yellow in a moment, that my brush is clean. Um, some clean paper towel as well. Beautiful. And now I need to start that process again. But this time I'm gonna use a lot less paint and I'm going to build the color and watch my overlap this time. So I'm going to do this and concentrate on blending that orange and yellow together. All right, so this time I wanna blend, the next one I'm gonna do is tangerine into blushing. Uh, the tangerine's pretty strong, so I'm only gonna use a very small amount of that. And you'll notice that it's, it's drying pretty quickly. I'm not having to work too hard. Now I'm gonna add the blushing. I'm gonna add a bit more blushing because that could be a little bit stronger. But this time with the blushing, I'm going to push it up into the pink and overlap it into the, uh, the orange that I've got there. The blushing seems to be like a little bit of an in-between sort of color. So it works really quite nicely to layer. And I'm being quite light with my brush. I'm not pushing it. I'm kind of feathering, feathering it out over the top of that fuchsia. I'm gonna take a little bit of paint off there and just go for a dirty brush now, just to overlap onto that orange. Yeah, there we go. And it's covering up the craft background that I started with quite nicely. So this time, because the red is so strong, I want to use a bit more of the magenta. And I want to start over here, get all of that color on my brush and do the same thing. So this time is quite a light feathered I've got to go up and down. It's like you're, you're blending bronzer on your face, I guess. You're, you're going to go quite lightly in some areas and a little darker in others. So it's all about your pressure of your brush. And I'm just working in a, in a circular motion, pushing that paint around my page and getting a really nice flow. Just like that. So yes, I'm making it look easy, but the reason I'm making it look easy is because like it's a repetitive motion, just washing it backwards and forwards over the top there. Um, I'm very aware of how strong this red is. So I'm going to go with the less is best approach rather than adding a whole heap of ruby. I'm going to use a, a much smaller amount and spread around that smaller amount. Because Ruby is such a beautiful, strong color, in fact, I haven't used enough here, I want to make sure that it goes on, but I don't want it to be too overpowering. So, there we go. And I actually think that it could have done with a little bit of Sedona as well. Sedona is like the in-betweenish colour. Um, here it is. It's got a little bit more depth to it. 
Um, I think it's more of a tomato-y colour. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of that in for depth. Yeah, look at that. And you have to be a little bit generous with your paint with this because the paint is what is got what's going to to move it around. You want to make it so you know the paint's doing all the blending for you rather than your hand. And you can see that I'm really following that motion of uh, backwards and forwards, layering over the top, just like so. Um, so just a bit of a tip: this technique will also work really, really nicely with on cards. Like you could do card fronts. You could do this on a the background of a scrapbook page. Um, you could do this in uh, on yeah your art journal covers and your canvases. You could do this with any brand of paint. I personally like this brand, the Dina Wakeley paints, because they are heavy bodied which means they have lots of juicy love behind them. Tracy says, is that a can of bourbon? Is that a can of bourbon? No, darling, it's not a can of bourbon. Uh, but that could also work. It is a can of Pepsi Max in my fabulous Natalie May scrapbooking. You can also get them on the website. <laughs> Thank you to my little promo girl there. Um, and Alison says that it matches your pretty nails. It matches my pretty nails. What, the page? Well, yes. Yeah, talking about the cover before as well. Um, thank you, Bevis. Um, okay, oh. so now I'm going straight back on here. Check the last one. Check who's on. Who's on? Who's watching me? Amy Morgan. Hey, girl. <laughs> I miss your face. So are there any um, stitchy ladies watching here? At the moment, anybody do a little bit of stitching on the side? Uh, not me, not my jam. Uh -uh. But if you want, here's a little bit of cross promotion for you. My lovely, wonderful friend, Amy Calissa, Amy Morgan, has got the most incredible website and a little, <laughs> little store, I'm not going to say that, an amazing store uh, that Amy has... Um, she has got some amazing new tutorials and information on how to stitch and she does some great kits as well. So some of Amy's products, for example, and the cards, are these little things. These are needle minders. So a needle minder is a handy little um, tool that you can pop onto your embroidery and your stitching if you are, so you, that you can look after your needle and not lose it. And Jessica is just finding for me some of Amy's cards. Amy does these splendid, look at me getting totally sidetracked because I love these. Um, look at these guys. This is a brilliant card to put with a gift. Can we all read that? This took me a gazillion years to make, but I guess, you are worth, guess you're worth it. So these are from Amy's brand and these are a blank card. And she's also got, I made this and watched 11 to 2 seasons on Netflix in the process. Made for me. Made by me for you, no returns. And I made this just for you, so you better pretend to like it. Are these not exactly what we all think every time we give someone a gift? Like, seriously. So, um, Amy Calissa, you can find her website. Amy will put her website link in the comments. Won't you pet? <laughs> Amy's my spirit animal. Amy and I are exactly the same person. I swear, just in different states. Um, so, yes, I do love a lovely little supportive um, plug. So, okay, back to the paint. Back to the paint. So you can see what's happening here. The colours are blending really, really nicely. And I know that there's a little reflection and I will turn the light down in a minute just to show you. Thanks, Ames. Do you miss my face, girl? Because I miss yours. Better? Mm. Hang on, Jess. All right, just washing my brush. Okay. So Jess has just turned the glare, the light down a bit, just so you can get a better idea 
of how my blending has been going. So moving across, you can see that I've gone color to color, overlapping, overlapping as I go. I could probably do with a little bit more color over the top of my blushing. I can still see a little bit of craft showing through, but I'm not actually that phased about that. I'm just gonna hit that with the heat gun next. So what I'd need to do next is I would love to add a little bit of stamping and I'm gonna create a focal point on my art journal page. So I mentioned yesterday afternoon, art journaling for everyone is totally different. So for me, art journaling is about an expression of creativity where I can try something new, then turn the page. Um, yes, Amy, we can hit that with some gold spritz, love, <laughs> but I don't have any handy. Um, so yeah, art journaling is just, yeah, the opportunity to create and turn the page. It's the opportunity to try something new, see something on Pinterest and go, yeah, I want to give that a go and learn some new skills and techniques. Um, nothing more than that. And I know it's not for everyone and that's okay. Uh, but you've just got to try something new. So what do I do next? It needs a little bit of... It needs a little bit of stamping. So on my original project, I did a few little spotty stamps and some lines and a little black pen and uh, a, what's that called? A, a sentiment. So I've created my background and I've created my background. Next, I need to start building my elements with my art journal page. So drink break. I've got the same stamps that I, I pulled out yesterday. So I've got my alpha stamp, I have a grid stamp, and I have a script stamp. So this is the Kayser Craft stamp that's available online. Uh, they're 15% off at the moment. And this is actually a six by four stamp, but I never use it at that size. So I've cut it in half because there's no rules that say that I have to use it as a whole stamp. Uh, this is a grid stamp, was a long skinny one. There's a texture stamp online, very similar to this one at the moment. Same thing, I never use it as a whole stamp. So, hey, stuff it, cut it in half. Um, and this one as I've got as a, a whole stamp. But I want my focal point, the hero, to go here in this spot. So what I need to do is I need to build in and around this. So I'm going to start with my grid stamp and I need to use the black archival ink because it needs to stick to the acrylic paint and it needs to be lovely and black. So black archival ink, which is permanent and waterproof, is going to be the thing to use. You'll notice again, no acrylic block, number one, because I, I want the flexibility of the stamp to move like this. So I'm going to just start with a few little lines on the side like that. And I'm not going to go all over the page. I'm just going to build an area around where my focal point is going to be. And I'm going to pop a bit down here. And I'm not adding ink every time. There's enough ink on this stamp that's spreading it around quite nicely. Beautiful. That's it. I'm also going to, actually I might just use the script stamp. That's kind of my favorite at the moment. So straight into here and do exactly the same thing, just lightly in and around the same spots. And I'm just lifting it slightly so that I get a partial stamp rather than a solid. The other thing that I'm doing that is super important is I'm connecting it to the side of the page, I'm anchoring it, as to quote, I think that was Dina Wakeley <laughs> taught me taught me that little tip. Um, it needs to come off the page at least on two sides. So I'm taking it off on here and I'm building it up and I'll just do a tiny amount of stamping to take it just up off that page. Um, might whack a little bit on that side. Beautiful. 
what is next? So for my focal point, I could quite easily, so previously I have used a, a paper artsy stamp. Uh, these are available at numerous um, online stores around Australia. My favorite online store to get paper artsy is Bev's Cross in Tassie. She's amazing, great service as well. Uh, unfortunately, I can't stock paper artsy because there's too many stockers in South Australia already. But this is another one that works as a really good one to use. I could also use... What did I pull out? Here we go, this guy here. So this is one of the Scrap Effects butterflies um, that I have available online and it's just a little die cut jobby. And I like that it's gonna have a little bit of dimension. It's got some, it's got some flutter to those wings and it's gonna sit right there. Hey Rebecca, how are you going? Um, all right, so the next thing I want to do is I need to frame this guy. So how do I frame it with a black pen? So I've got a food ball pen here. So this is a 1.5, so it's quite a thick pen. It's quite a, um, it's like a, is, is it a roller ball? Yeah, it's, it's a ball. So it's got a roller ball in it. Uh, so that's what I'm going to use and how do you draw a circle? Okay, I like to hold my pen up pretty high when I do a circle and I know that that's going to be my top That's going to be my bottom. I want it to go to about there and I want it to go to about there So I've just done my little marks and next thing I want to do is I'm just going to Do that Okay, I want it to be loose. I don't want a perfect circle because nothing else about this page is perfect. I'm gonna pop that there. But something else I wanna do, um, everyone loves, everyone knows I love me a good doodle. So I'd love me doing a little bit of doodling in here. And I've just written Amy's name because it flows beautifully. <laughs> and the words don't say anything. They're just a little scribble. And that's probably all I need to do there. Um, on one of my previous pages, I cut it. I did it as a double, but I cut it in a round edge there. So I got a plate out of the kitchen and cut around there because I wanted to do a round edge, but I'm gonna keep this one as a solid line. My butterfly, I will glue down here. The glue that I'm going to use today, I got the new uh, Tombow Mono Multi Liquid Glue in, so I'm just gonna whack a little in the body of the butterfly. Um, nice, clear, drying glue, got a pointy end, Got a, a like a, a swipey end as well. Uh, quite good value for money, that little guy. And I'm going to stick that smack bang in the middle ish. All right, that'll do. Uh, it needs a title, it needs some sort of words on here. My art journaling for me is an expression of creativity, so I need some sort of words to go on it. And I also need to create a bit of a frame. I've added black on here so I also need to do a black doodle edge all the way around as well so if you are doing this on the front of an art journal cover if you are doing this on the front of a dark art journal color cover I recommend giving it a coat of gesso first just to plant a good foundation for your acrylic paint to sit on if you are doing it on the front of a Dilusions journal, um, you can do a gesso coat as well. I chose not to on mine and it covered it quite nicely. Uh, if, you, if you do a, um, a cover of an art journal and you don't perch or you don't have a plastic 
sleeve for it. What I did with mine to uh, just protect the paint is I gave it a coat of gel medium just to seal, seal in the paint. And a bit across the top here. And I know when I take my bulldog clip off, I've got a corner that I've missed. There we go. But I'm loving this. this. This is coming up a treat, actually. So there's lots of things I can do from here. I can build on this in so many different ways. I could quite easily um, do some journaling and follow the lines of my rainbow. I could... Um, do some more stamping in along there, but I don't want to do too much. I think I'm just going to add something, um, some wise words of wisdom. Um, Jessica, Google me a, Pinterest me a quote about art, please, that's not 117 sentences long. What can you come up with? So. Art washes away from the soul, the dust. Uh. Nah, that's boring. Move on. I don't think outside the box, I think of what I can do with the box. No, too long. Art is therapy. Art is therapy. Right, perfect. Third time charm. So, of course, I'm, draw I'm painting over almost wet acrylic paint here, so it's not going on as nice and slick as I would like. But what I will do is grab my black Pintor pen. Hold that. my Pintor paint pen. So these are same but better than Posca's. Um, five bucks cheaper than, than the other brand. Um, and they've got a higher pigment. So giving it a good shake. And it should work first time. Look at that, baby. There we go. Art is, what do you say, Jess? Therapy. Therapy. How do you spell therapy? T-H. Oh, now I've... T-H-E-R-A-P-Y. I had to think about that. E-R-A-P-Y. A-P. T-H-E-R-A-P-Y. Oh, my goodness <laughs> me. That was harder than it needed to be. Okay. So oh, you can yeah. see that that just works straight away. I know in the past with Poscas, I've had lots of trouble with them and I can't get them to work mm. straight away. The Pintor, Pilot Pintor pens, I have them in extra fine, fine and medium. To be perfectly honest, I don't use the extra fine very often. I find it to be a little bit too fine um, and I like I can control this one. The medium tip looks like this one. So it's still quite a, a thicker tip, but you can thin it down. Um, excellent range of colours. So, you know, there's a, a fluoro pink, a beautiful pastel yellow here. Um, and they're all five bucks. All the sizes are five bucks. So I'll be doing another order of those tomorrow to top up because um, I think I've run out of a... Couple, like, a couple of the extra fine ones I've run out of. So um, so there you go. There's my painty art journal page. Um, have fun. Give it a go. Um, tag me on Instagram and Facebook. Um, hashtag Natalie May Scrapbooking. Uh, my Facebook, uh, sorry, my Instagram is Happy Dax. H-A-P-P-Y. <laughs> H-A-P-P-Y. D-A-K-S. Stop talking, Jess. Um, but yeah, Happy Dax. And that is, I'd love to see your creations. I mean, this is super easy. But the key is have your paints in front of you in the colour order that you would like to use them. This makes a massive difference to the ease of your creating. I can't stress that enough. If you've got that in front of you, you will be off and ready and creating in no time. And the hard work and the guesswork 
has, has is all taken out for you. So um, I'll take a photo of this, pop the links in the comments, uh, and I hope you're all having a fantastic day. Jump on the website, nataliemay.com.au, and the next order that comes through that includes a yellow Dina Wakeley paint will receive a free stubby holder. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. <laughs> All right, guys, get on it. Have a great day. Wash your hands, kiss your kids, and chat soon.